Some people have called me a doomer. Others call me a pessimist. Personally, I think I'm a realist. If I look at the plans that most nations have made to limit their contributions to climate change, I think it's just not going to happen. The people making these plans are either ill-informed, delusional or lying, or maybe all of the above. Now, there's a new publication just out of the University of Melbourne in Australia that, according to the press release, has revealed a huge climate mitigation challenge and claims that the IPCC has overestimated how much carbon dioxide removal can realistically accomplish. Yes, let's have a look. Okay, I admit I'm partly talking about this because I feel like some people have misunderstood my position on what we should do about climate change. They're probably confused because I've said both that A, we need to get serious about carbon dioxide removal, and B, carbon dioxide removal isn't going to save the day. So how do these two things fit together? Well, they fit together because I'm a doomer. I mean, a realist. I'm a realist. Carbon dioxide removal isn't going to help much, but it's going to help a little. And in contrast to the idea that we'll just stop oil, I can see it actually happening. If you're wondering why I have difficulties believing that we'll just stop using fossil fuels, let me tell you a little story from the local neighborhood. A couple of months ago, they drilled a hole about 30 kilometers north of here. They found oil. The company happily reports that the oil is of very high quality and now they're building a well. Does this look like we're going to stop using fossil fuels? Because it's not what it looks like to me. So. Carbon dioxide removal. Not great, but better than nothing. Let's do it. So much about me, but I wanted to talk about this new paper. First, though, I need to sort out a terminology issue because I've noticed that a lot of people confuse carbon dioxide removal, carbon capture and storage, and direct air capture. These are three different things. Carbon dioxide removal is anything that reduces carbon dioxide levels in the atmosphere. Trees, for example, do carbon dioxide removal, but any technology which mimics this process also counts. Carbon capture and storage, in contrast, is a way of partly preventing the emission of carbon dioxide, for example, on power plants. But it doesn't entirely prevent the emission. So if you do it at a fossil fuel plant, that doesn't remove carbon carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, it just reduces the emission. Therefore, carbon capture and storage at fossil fuel plants is not a method of carbon dioxide removal. However, if you do carbon capture and storage when burning biomass, then you actually do reduce the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere because the biomass, such as trees, took the carbon out of the air. This is called bioenergy with carbon capture and storage, BACS for short. It's also a way of producing energy. Yes, you can actually make energy by removing carbon dioxide. And since you can make energy and therefore money with it, this has been the most popular way of removing carbon dioxide. And finally, direct air capture is a different method of carbon dioxide removal. It basically works by pumping air through huge filters and trapping the carbon dioxide. It's highly inefficient because the density of carbon dioxide in the air is quite low and it also takes up a lot of energy. There are only a few experimental direct air capture installations to date and there are some other methods of carbon dioxide removal but the currently most widely used one is BACS. If someone tells you that carbon dioxide removal basically doesn't exist, they're probably confusing carbon dioxide removal with direct air capture. It's clear by now that there's no way we'll limit warming to below 2 degrees without carbon dioxide removal. The International Energy Agency concluded in a report from 2022 that reaching net zero by 2050 is virtually impossible without carbon dioxide removal. The IPCC too writes very clearly that carbon dioxide removal is part of all model scenarios that limit global warming to 2 degrees or lower by 2100. Okay, the thing is now that all plans to get to net zero by 2050 rely on extensive carbon dioxide removal in some way. Given that the currently biggest contributor is bioenergy with carbon capture and storage, a lot of people put their hopes on that. And this then brings me to 
the new paper. The IPCC draws conclusions by working out what they call mitigation pathways that are basically possible courses of action. The authors of the new paper now say that for what carbon dioxide removal is concerned, those pathways proposed in the IPCC report are not only unrealistic, they're actually problematic. They write that carbon dioxide removal deployments, quote, pose major economic, technological and social feasibility challenges, threaten food security and human rights, and risk overstepping multiple planetary boundaries with potentially irreversible consequences, end quote. As I said, the major method of carbon dioxide removal is currently bioenergy with carbon capture and storage. And the problem is that to scale this up, you need all this bioenergy in the first place. That means in practical terms, you need to grow stuff and growing stuff needs land, land that other people might want to use for other things. The authors of the new paper looked at the numbers which the IPCC assumes for this technology and the IPCC projects that BACs could remove up to 10 or 11 billion tons of carbon dioxide per year. The authors then estimate that this will, quote, require converting up to 29 million square kilometers of land over three times the area of the United States to bioenergy crops or trees and potentially push over 300 million people into food insecurity, end quote. They say that a realistic estimate would be more like two to three billion tons of carbon dioxide per year removed by this method, which is about a quarter of the IPCC estimate. Basically, this means that even the IPCC plans to limit warming to two degrees are unrealistic. Though personally, I think one doesn't need a paper published in science to see this. You just need to know that at the moment, the amount of carbon dioxide that we actively remove, mostly by backs, is a little more than 2 million tons a year. Doesn't look likely that we're going to reach 2 billion anytime soon, does it? If you find all that a bit depressing, it might lift your spirits to have a look at what my friends at Planet Wild have been up to recently. Planet Wild is a community-based environmental protection organization. They're funding the restoration of ecosystems to preserve our nature and wildlife. I've been part of their community since earlier last year, and I've been really impressed by their work. It's practical, it's useful, and it's realistic. They document all their missions with video reports that you can find right here on YouTube. For example, they've repopulated a forest in Germany with the Eurasian lynx, and in their latest mission, they've gone to Cape Verde to protect sea turtles from poachers with the help of dogs. It's such a lovely hands-on approach, and it really makes a difference. All of this is made possible by a community that funds these projects, a community of people who care about the environment, people like you and I. One of us doesn't have a lot of impact, but if we do it together, we can make a difference. What I find so great about Planet Wild is that they don't leave me wondering where my money goes. You can become a nature supporter for as little as six dollars a month. That doesn't even cover the shipping costs of that thing you were just about to order. If you want to join a growing community that makes a real difference, go check out Planet Wild through the link in the description or by scanning the QR code. If you're among the first two hundred people signing up with the code Zabine, I'll cover the first month of your subscription. And don't worry that you'll get stuck with them. You can cancel your membership every month. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.